So today what we're going to do is we're going to cover the rest of the baby dresser. Specifically we're going to cover part of the top, uh, the, the top in the planing process, and then we're going to address the web frame for the drawers. So with that said, let's cut to the drawing and talk about what we're going to cover today. So let's do it. Good morning YouTube. Uh, so today um, I'm going to kind of splice a couple videos together. I'm going to plane down the top piece and construct the web frame for the baby's dresser. Now the reason why there's a change of venue, um, my boxing made the pieces of my tabletop too wide for my planer. So I'm just going to plane the whole thing down as one fell swoop. So with that said, let's get to it. So in this clip, I honestly had a recording error. Uh, I recorded after I had finished planing the board down. Uh, again, the reason why I chose this particular planer is it did a really good job of bringing down the thickness from 7 eighths, I mean, sorry, 15 16 down to 3 fourths thickness, which gave me a cons clean and consistent face on both sides of the board, which makes it a lot easier to work with. So now I can bring it back to the main shop and start working on the rest of it. So today we're going to work on this structure here along with the dividers inside the dresser. So the first process will be we're going to cut the drawer dividers out of the remaining plywood. And one thing that we might have to do, and we'll just do it now just in case, is the drawers kind of warped a little bit in the sun. So we might have to put a set of dividers going right down the center. So we'll need three seven inch ones and two four inch dividers cut today. Now, the other thing we're gonna put focus on is this structure here. So this is gonna be our web frame. So we're gonna need to do is we need a front piece of plywood that's probably the highest quality. So we want our nicest piece here and then we might, I might actually change this structure just for the sake of making less cuts. What I might edit is instead, because this, I already have these parts cut. So instead, what we'll do is when we make these, so these are our styles. So when we're doing standard furniture construction, these are classified as our styles and these are our rails. So just to save on the amount of cuts, I'm going to change the drawing to one, two styles, and then one, two, three, four rails. Now the point of these two rails on the inside is it gives me a, sp a support piece to connect that drawer divider in. And again, why that's important is since we're doing floating drawers, so the drawers are not sitting on the ground, I need a piece of wood to secure my runner on. So this is critical to creating the type of drawer we're doing. So with that said, what we're gonna focus on is we're gonna do the dividers first, rip them to their final widths, and then work on the styles and rails and do all the pocket holing today. So with that said, let's get to it. So let's get to work. So right now I have a mock-up of what the web frame is going to look like for the baby dress. So I do have two rail pieces and two style pieces that will meet the requirements. So I'm going to need at least two more of these rails cut out of my excess pieces as well as one, two dividers for the top. Now we had spoken about the other shelves getting one, so that would be three pieces, so three of these pieces cut at seven inches. And the reason why I'm gonna make that effort is that I can use this to, secure, to the bottom of the web frame and the shelf below it and each shelf going down the project to hold it together so it never warps. Um, granted, I'm not putting crazy amounts of weight on it, but what I'm going to try to do is 
I'm going to make the parts just in case as I'm putting it together, it doesn't fit. All right? It's better to be prepared than not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the table saw ready. We'll start by cutting the parts that I need. So again, I need two more rail pieces. So those are about two and seven sixteenths. So we'll rip two, two, two seven and sixteen pieces. So then our web frame will be done. Then I'm gonna take the rest of the parts left over and I'm gonna rip them at four inches and seven and seven. So three sevens, two fours, two. <laughs> two fours. So with that said, let's get the table saw set up. So I'm setting up two and seven sixteenths for cutting the rails. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna lock it down. Just double check. And then I'm gonna test that measurement against my existing piece. A little bit off. Perfect. Now let's just cut our two pieces now. So one little tip I forgot to mention is I have these playground rubber mats and I have them on the end of the table so that if a board falls off, it doesn't get dented on the concrete floor. And then on the other side, I have a mat set up for myself just to give myself um, a little height on the table so I get, um, it raises my center of gravity so that I can reach across the table a little bit easier without having to worry about bending over the table itself. And also, it, it's comfortable for my feet. So now I'm gonna set up my dividers in my drawer exactly four inches. So, made a mistake, I forgot to set my micro jig to the new measurement. And if I had kept going, I would have cut into my jig. So, gotta take your time on things like that. Now I'm gonna set my two sevens. I'm at three seven inch pieces. So, tap it out, lock it in. set these scrap pieces aside for other parts and save them just in case. So now the web frame, so now the web frame has to go on top of this surface. So let me see, which one was the front? That was the front style 
rear style. Then we got our four rails, so you're going to do one here. This one's going to be about there. Here and there. So what is critical, so these end pieces don't exactly matter because, th again, they're going to be flush with the shelf. So that's the final length. The spacing on the drawer, though, does matter. So I look at my plans. The distance from here to the inside divider, so if I put this up, so this is the four inch divider. So the distance from over here to here should be about nine and a half inches. So let me just adjust that real quick. So from here to here should be about nine and a half inches. And that will give me my spacing for the web frame itself. So here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna put these aside. And these are going to get cut down to their final length on the chop saw after I finalize my styles. So what I'm looking for is if I can slide this to get a better piece. So if I put that there and I cut it to this length, I'll only have one, two defects to fill. Whereas if I went the other way, I'd have three. So this will be less work. I'm going to put it right there. And then I'll measure my, sh my shelf one more time, take out my combination square, and mark it. So let's do that. Now that I have that laid out, I'm going to measure for my rails now. So the interior measurement from here this side is 18 and a half. So I'll mark out 18 and a half on each of these boards. And then cut on the chop saw. pocket holes for the rail. So I'm going to pocket hole into the styles this way, this way, and then on the side here, the rail is going to get, I mean the style is going to get one on the end, one on the end, one on the end, one on the end, and then one, two, three, four across the center, and then one, two, three, four. And that will allow me to screw it into the wall. So there'll be f six total on the side. And then here, we're going to pocket hole one, two, three, four, facing both up and down. So this will screw down into the web frame and up into the top. So that will create a nice strong structure. And then I'll do the same over here. All right. But what I'm going to do now is I need to get this set up first, so let's line up the nine and a half measurement so that I could put the center rails dead center. So what does nine and a half look like? Nine and a half. And I'm going to use my combination square to make sure that it's not bowing off on an angle. So 
that's in the center. So I'm just going to make an alignment mark here. So that's one. Two. Three. Four. Now I've got to do the same for the other divider. So I'm going to put this here now. I'm going to move this over. Make it flush with the end. Nine and a half. And then I'm just going to make sure that's square. Put that here, square and square. So I'm going to put this in the center. I'm going to make my alignment marks. So one, two, three. Four. And now that I have those all set, I can do one, two, three, four. So there's four here, two on the end. Two on the end, one here. One, two, one, two, one, one, one. So all the pocket holes have been laid out <coughs> for the web frame. So now we gotta do one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. And then one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. All right. Now, while I have everything in the layout phase, I'm also going to do the same for those 7-inch um, dividers. They're literally going to get pocket holed the same way. So, ready? So, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. Now, the reason why I went with that kind of spacing, specifically for these dividers, it'll get one screw in the front of the web frame, one in so the stop in the front style, two screws in the center rails, and then a fourth screw in the rear style. And what that will do is it will pull the entire structure flat. So with that said, let's pocket it all. So just like before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my mark, lock it down, go forward, go back. But first off, I want to make sure that this foot that allows me to lock my piece down locks it nice and tight. I don't want it to move at all while I'm cutting it. Knock that down. All right, let's do this. Okay. Get it done. everything's pocket holed what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with these two end rails first I'm going to glue and then screw them in and once I've got that frame secured I'm going to line the center ones up and then go from there so with that said let's get to it
go. We got our wet frame. So what I'm gonna do real quick, just gently sand it up. Clean up the uh, the wood for priming, and uh, we'll put a fresh coat of prime on this right now. So on the front piece, I had a little piece of wood from the front edge split off, so I'm going to pull that back. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue it back on, because it's just too big just to fill in with wood filler. Now what I'm going to use is a clamp, this painter's tape. I'm just going to tape it on at the very end, and then just slowly work my way across, pulling it tight into the work piece. Now this always works really well on like anything that splinters out on a project. So like let's just say I'm doing a rattery job and I'm working on the corner and the corner chips out. This is probably the best solution to a mistake like that. So I would use this as my number one repair tactic. So I'm going to put this aside. I'm also going to fill in the holes just on the front edge, not the back, just the front. And then we're going to put a coat of primer right over this. So with that said, uh, let's do it. So I had some formatting errors with my camera. So I did not capture the priming of the web frame. So next time we're going to paint the web frame and we are one step closer to actually putting this project together. So with that said, I hope everyone's staying safe and uh, I'll see you guys around. Bye.